Drafting with Numot, Invasion Block Draft. Hello friends, Kenji back again for another edition of Drafting with Numot. This time, we're going to flashback draft, guess what, Invasion Block Draft, which throws us back to, what, 1999 or something like that? When I was, you know, 35 years old or something. Anyways, uh, this is going to be Invasion, Plane Shift, Apocalypse. This is one of the older formats where... Multicolor is the basis. Two color is unheard of and generally worse, excuse me, than just going three color. Um, the removal spells are going to be great. The creatures are generally going to be very medium. Uh, games go a little bit longer. There are plenty of two for ones, non creature two for ones. Uh, and so it's, it's a little bit of a grind, but it's one of my favorite formats. And uh, something that I love to play. So let's see what we got here. We got a either rift for the rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, discard a card at random. If you discard a creature card this way, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield unless any player pays five life. No. All right. The cards that we are looking at here are Breath of Darigaz, which is going to be my slam pick, Cauldron Dance, Agonizing Demise, Repulse. And I'll go over what these cards do since I'm sure a lot of people don't know. Breath of Darigaz is red and one. For one damage to each creature without flying and each player. Medium. But if you pay the kicker, and this was the set where a kicker was first introduced, you deal four damage to each creature without flying and each player. This is one of the better uncommons. It's basically a wrath. Um, and it's just very, very good. Grixis is one of my favorite color combinations to go. So taking a Breath of Darigaz to start things off is great. Agonizing Demise, great removal spell. Repulse, just a very good two for one. But Breath of Darigaz is going to be the easy pickup here. And then we get past an Armored Guardian. This card is very good. I'm not going to call it a bomb, but it is very solid. Uh, it's a 5 mana 2 5. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Or it can gain Shroud until end of turn. So heavy white, heavy blue, uh, but a very good card. Benelish Heralds, similarly very good. 2 4 for 4. And 2 4 for 4 is already good stats in this format. And you could parry 4. Tap it to draw a card. Queer and Elves, also a good one. Ramp is definitely a thing. There's also another Repulse in the pack, and I think I'm actually going to just take the Repulse here over the Armored Guardian, even though that's doesn't seem correct. Trust me, uh, this is going to pay off dividends. Normally, I would take the Armored Guardian, but I don't really want to take the Blue-White card right now, even though it is perfectly capable, or you're perfectly capable of going five color in this format. The, uh, the prohibitive double white, double blue on the activation of the Armored Guardian means I'm going to take the Repulse here. And follow that up with, well, probably another Repulse. I could have had three Repulses now, which is insane. Other good cards in this pack include Benelis Trapper. Tappers are always great and limited. Um, Dream Thrush. Blue has three plus creatures that uh, can fix your, mana, fix your mana or color screw the opponent. Like, you can... Tap down, rather not tap down, you can tap the Dream Thrush to turn one of your opponent's lands into a different type and kind of hose them on their upkeep. But it also fixes for you since you are playing so many colors. Um, again, this is base three color format, generally more. Uh, Crimson Acolyte also fine, but we're going to take another Repulse and just be very, very happy with the way this draft is starting. This next pack doesn't have too many great ones, although... I do have some very, very lovely pickups here. Uh, there's a whole cycle of apprentice creatures and disciple creatures. The ones that can tap are obviously going to be the best, uh, like this one here. You can pay a white to tap it, and it's a 1-1 one, one for 1. Soulburn is a fine removal spell, and since I'm looking to be Grixis, uh, definitely a thing that I could take here. Ravenid, Ra Ravenous Rat's surprisingly good because of the number of gating creatures in the format. Gating creatures are creatures that when they enter, you have to bounce another creature that shares a creature type with it, or rather a color type with it. So in the next few packs, we're going to see a lot of creatures that uh, when they enter, they want to bounce something, and Ravenous Rats can really take advantage of that. Shackles, also a decent removal spell here. Kabu Aggressor, Fine Filler. Um, I think I think we're just going to take the Aggressor to stay two color for now. I don't really want to move into a third color just yet, um, but definitely a fine one. Here, I'm actually going to take the Washout. I'm not the biggest fan of Washout, but this definitely has some potential. Uh, return all permanents of the color of your choice to their owner's hands. You can really easily get 
uh, people with this. Even just bouncing two creatures for four mana, turning it into the into the void is perfectly fine. Other good cards: Venomous Lancer, six mana for a four four first strike when you pay Kicker. Duskwalker, five mana three three fear. Hooded Kavu's nice. Sulfur Vent, good Grix is fixing, but I'll take the washout and see where we end up. <laughs> oh wow, interesting. Uh, some very good black cards here. Both Urborg Emissary and Exotic Curse are first pickable quality, honestly. Emissary is a 3-1 for a 3, but if you pay the kicker of a blue and a uh, blue and a colorless, you can return target permanent to its owner's hand. And then Exotic Curse is just straight-up removal, uh, since, again, generally you're 3 colors, so you're going to give a creature minus 3, minus 3 for 3 mana. Both good picks. Um... I think I'd rather have the removal spell here than the emissary, but both, again, very, very solid. Followed that with, up with a very easy prohibit. Two mana, counter target spell if its converted mana cost is two or less. Or you can pay four mana, counter target spell if its converted mana cost is four or less. Great start to the draft, and phew, happy to take another prohibit here. We are picking up a lot of nice removal, and uh, that's great because I don't mind picking up creatures later. And uh, the creatures are pretty low power level anyways so just taking all the good removal spells this early is really going to to pay off plus i'm not necessarily playing a uh, black right so we can still move into a powerful um different strategy because in the last pack you get a lot of the enemy colors paired you get a lot of green black red blue uh white black blue whatever's i mean just just a lot of off, off color uh synergies so we'll keep an eye open in the last pack uh this is our initial pack we did wheel the reviving vapors reveal the top three cards of your library put one of them in your hand you gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost put all the cards revealed this way in your graveyard we're gonna go ahead and take that not necessarily gonna play it but i do think it's definitely playable uh could be red white blue if you go red white blue you do get some decent pickups in the last few packs We'll take an Ardent Soldier here, but pretty happy with how we how we started. Didn't see much red after the Breath of Darigaz pick, although that card is very splashable. Okay, Riptide Crab on the wheel, as well as a Prison Barricade, so we could be moving into that into that red, uh, white, blue. Hell, we could even be white, blue, black. That's another very easy color combination. We'll just have to see what the next pack holds for us. Hopefully, Flame Tongue Kavu is in our future. Because uh, Flame Tongue Kavu is, in fact, in the second pack. All right, some more filler cards here. Nothing too amazing. But like I said, the creatures, the creatures in this format are <laughs> generally underpowered. Again, you do have cards like the Flame Tongue Kavu which are obviously insane, but uh, for the most part, they're going to be filler. They're going to be hill giants. They're going to be five mana three threes even. In fact, hill giants in this format are already above curve. What did we open here? We opened an ancient spider, which is actually very, very good. Two five flying, sorry, two five first strike reach for four mana. Very hard to kill, blocks everything effectively. Um, we also have a hunting drake here, two two flyer for five. When it enters the battlefield, put target red or green creature on top of its owner's library. There's a Meyer Kavu, Silver Drake, Nightscape Familiar. Doesn't look like we might be going the red route right now, so I'm going to put these red cards in the sideboard. Uh, granted, we haven't seen much black either, but those late black cards in the uh, first pack lead me to believe that might be worth going into. Hmm. Could still be some form of green, white, blue as well. A lot of different options here. A little bit tough, because there's no good removal in this pack. So we're forced to take a creature, and I don't really want to commit myself too heavily, but I guess Silver Drake is probably fine. We'll see how this ends up. Brixian Tyranny, all right. Not exactly the card we want. Uh, Sunscape, rather, Stormscape Battle Mage is very good, though, and I think that's what we're going to take here. Uh, there's a whole cycle of Battle Mages as well, where they have double kicker costs that are off-color from their initial cost. So this is 3 mana, 2-2. Two, two. If you pay a white kicker, you gain 3 life, medium. Uh, but if you play, pay a 
black and two you get to destroy target non-black creature that creature can't be regenerated so very very good two for one value there happy to take it and this pack is pretty medium as well i'm gonna go ahead and take the nightscape familiar in case we do end up in black um could also consider taking the mire kavu but i think this is just going to be a nightscape familiar follow that up with a pretty easy Samite Pilgrim, and I think we're going to lock ourselves into playing some amount of white uh, as well as blue. Other good cards in this pack include like Bog Down, which is just Mind Rot on steroids. Uh, Caldera Kabu is also fine, but Pilgrim is just very, very good. It makes combat hell for your opponent and uh, just protects your creatures in a great way. All right, so red, blue, and and sorry uh white blue unknown as of now there's a cavern harpy in this pack aurora griffin four mana two two flyers are the norm confound is great always like main decking one we do have a stormscape familiar here which i think i'm gonna take it's on color uh it reduces the cost of our white and black spells so it seems good enough here for me another samite pilgrim here over allied strategies oh actually there's a magma burst in this pack too Yowza, Magma Burst is one of the best removal spells. This is going 6th pick. This is 4 mana for 3 damage to a creature or player, and then you can sacrifice 2 lands to deal 3 damage to a different creature or player. That is better than Samite Pilgrim, and I do have Breath of Darigaz already, so I'm going to go ahead and take the Magma Burst. I think that card is just way too powerful to pass. Uh, sea Snid going to be my pick here. That's one of the blue creatures I was talking about that can... Color fix or color screw. Also an Arctic Merfolk here, but Sea Snid's perfectly fine. 5 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, surprisingly, the biggest creature on the battlefield a lot of the time. So we'll stay open to some shenanigans going on here. Um, if we're playing a little white, then Ardent Soldier is definitely okay. 4 mana, 2-3 Vigilance is not the worst case scenario. Mm, we'll see though. The world is still our oyster. And the thing is, again, enemy colors are king in the last pack. So you're going to see a lot of uh, cards that are great, but might be a little bit off of the color management that we can play. Luckily, I do get access to like a Reef Shaman in the last pack, which can fix for, for our colors. So we'll see if we can uh, see if we can make that work. Eighth and final pack that we haven't seen here coming up momentarily. Hopefully, gonna have some more good ones. If I could, man, get another Samite Pilgrim somehow eighth pick, I would be very happy. I think taking the Magma Burst over the Samite Pilgrim number two was correct, but who knows? Who knows? Okay, this last pack has another Nightscape Familiar if we'd like to take that, which I guess is going to be the pick since there's Nothing else too amazing here. Not guaranteed to play it, but not a bad one if we do end up playing some amount of black. Jeez, just all the Nightscape familiars. This looks like a daring leap here for us. Decent combat trick. Target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying, and first strike until end of turn. In a pinch, I'll play that. Uh, could play Singe. I don't mind running that type of card if I do end up playing the red here. Interesting. A little bit all over the place. Uh, so what do I get in the last pack if I'm playing base blue-white? I get the red-blue cards. I get the white-black cards. I get... Not the white-green. Um, white-black, white... There's no white-red, right? I guess I could pick up like Desolation Angel or Desolation Giant. White, black, and white, red, blue, red, and blue, green. But no blue, black. Not in the last pack. Hmm. We'll see. We will see. I would not prefer to be blue, white going into the last pack. I'd rather be some combination of, of Grixis colors, but... This is where we ended up. Um, sideboard Aura Blast for the enchantments seems okay versus the Sisse's Ingenuity. I could play the Sunscape Familiar. 
And Arctic Morfolk's fine as well if you have some creatures with enters the battlefield abilities like our Stormcape, Stormscape Battle Mage, so it's not the worst case scenario. All right, give me the whammies. Give me the tasty ones in pack three. Fungal Shambler is our rare. This card is good, it's just not something that I can take here. It's a 6-4 Trample for 7. When it deals damage to an opponent, you draw a card and that opponent discards a card. Uh, the cards that we're looking at here are Manacles of Decay, Razorfin Hunter, and the Dead Ringers. I think I like taking the red here. I think I like taking the Razorfin Hunter. Red, white, and blue, definitely. A decent color combination and a two mana pinger. Pretty nice. Manacles, again, also fine. But I think I'll take the Hunter and see what uh, what else we can pick up this pack. Blood fly Fire Colossus. That card is huge and these games do go long, but eight mana might be a little bit out of range of what I want to take. There is another Razorfin Hunter here, which I think I'm going to take over the Colossus. Don't get me wrong, this is, you'd be surprised at how late these games go, but I'm not sure if Colossus is correct for this deck. Although, <laughs> reviving Vapors into Bloodfire Colossus does seem kind of silly. I think the Double Pinger is probably better. Yeah, I, I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to take the Double Up on the Pinger. Ooh, how about the Triple Up on the Pinger? Uh, passing an order in chaos here, which is nice. Another manacles in the pack as well. Um, Fervent charge is decent. Dega sanctuary is also fine, but triple triple pinger to start off this pack is is really solid. I guess we probably play this Kabu aggressor as well in this deck. And the sunscape familiar is not getting much value here. I kind of want to cut the Ardent Soldier as well. Honestly, I kind of want to just cut all of the white cards and move back into Grixis, but... Well, honestly, what am I playing white for? I'm playing white for basically the Samite Pilgrim and the Silver Jake, kind of? I mean, it's not very amazing. I guess we'll just take the Reef Shaman here to stay open. It's one of the other blue land fixer cards there is a manacles of decay here but i think i'll take the reef shaman play it safe move the white cards to my sideboard right now if i somehow end up just red blue i'm going to be amazed but two color is not again very viable in this format black gives me exotic curse and the stormscape Battle Mage, kill. Wow, a jilt here too, okay. We'll stay on the red-blue path. Uh, I have passed three Manacles of Decay now, but I do like where our <laughs> two-color deck is going. <laughs> I suppose in a pinch, I could always just like splash black, splash white. That's not a bad idea. I uh, Like, I need more win cons right now. Three Razorfin Hunter is great, but it doesn't win the game. Even just picking up like some random hill giants, <laughs> I would be pretty happy with here. Uh, the thing is, white doesn't give me the winners either, the win cons either. Coastal Drake, okay, that's good. Do like myself a good coastal drake. Sometimes this just bricks the entire like red green decks. Uh, the ability to bounce a cavity with owner's hand is really solid, and a two one flyer for three is is good in this format. So, gonna happily take the coastal drake, and notably stay stay red blue for now. <sighs> Triple razorfin hunter. I'm surprised at this deck. Uh oh, I might have to take a different color here. There is a Goblin Ringleader, which is medium. I could also take the Flowstone Charger, which is good. Flowstone Charger is a win con for sure. And a decent white card in any scenario. Jada Response also okay, but we'll take the Charger. We will take the Charger and see where we go from there. 
Looks like the white might be coming back in and then maybe just playing a black for the Stormscape Battle Mage. But we'll see. We shall see. All right, another late uh, Reef Shaman means we're going to happily splash the Curse probably now and be able to play these other white cards like the Pilgrim and the Silver Drake. So good for us here. This pack doesn't really have too much. I'm going to take the sideboard Orem's Thunder and uh, see if that does anything. Dega Sanctuary also okay. I don't think we can run it in this deck, but maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Another Dega Sanctuary. We're just going to go ahead and take that. Uh, some last pick cards. Junky Trunks. Nothing worth there. So yeah, it looks like I'm just going to be base uh, blue-red and then splashing. Uh, splashing white-black. Base, blue-red, splashing white, black. I think it's worth splashing the removal spell. And again, it gives us access to the... Uh, where is it? The... Where do you go with the blue card? The Stormscape... No, the Stormscape Battle Mage. All right. Filler cards. And I think we got there. I think we got there. A little bit low on win cons, but... Uh... This deck should be able to perform moderately well. It's got some good interaction spells. Might cut this Singe, though. But it's got good interactive spells. Uh, Wash Out, Magma Burst, Double Repulse, Double Prohibit, Jilt, Breath of Darigaz, and then just good ways to, to hold off early aggression from the opponents. So let's add our lands now. Do we want the Ancient Spring? Yes. And we are going to add... A decent number of a decent number of blue for sure and a decent number of red. Nine blue is probably too much, but I think eight minimum is good. So seven, eight with the ancient spring. Probably want at least five mountains for those turn two razorfin hunters. In fact, I could even go see see going six. Um, seven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. This is one black and two planes. But remember, I have two Reef Shaman and a Sea Snid to also help fix. So I think this should work. This gives me eight red, sorry, eight blue, six red, two white, one black. The only card that I can imagine uh, being a little bit hard to cast here is this Flowstone Charger. As it's double off color, but I think I need it for like the potential win con. I have good ways to clear the board, and uh, a 5-2 attacker is quite nice. Plus, a 2-5 is very, very hard to attack into. I wonder if I'm supposed to play the Reviving Vapors too, though. I don't think we want the Vapors. I don't think it's better than anything else in this deck right now. I mean, maybe Washout is too cute. But I think it's worth keeping. So let's submit this, and uh, let's see how the games play out. Stay tuned. Here we are for the first round with our Invasion Block Draft. We are going to draw first, because I believe this is a draw first format. And our hand is lovely. Got a Jilt, got a Turn 2 Razorfin Hunter, got a Stormscape Apprentice. Our opponent's on a Mulligan. Again, because this format is so many two-for-ones, so much um, multicolor, so many multicolor spells, I think drawing first is almost always correct. But a lot of people opt not to do that. Ooh, this is kind of good. I could actually play a turn three Flowstone Charger here if I wanted to. Um, I could play Mountain. I could play Stormscape Familiar here. And then my Flowstone Charger is actually going to cost only uh, three mana. And I could sack the Ancient Spring here to get the white. All right, wash out a draw. That might be a little bit too greedy, though. I think I think now that our opponent played Dream Thrush, uh, I'd rather just play out the Razorfin Hunter. Offer the trade first, if they want to. But this represents a creature that they have to deal with, otherwise I just get to kill their 1-1 for free. 
Remember, Breath of Darigaz only deals damage to non-flying creatures. My opponent already on their fourth basic land type, and they have a zap. Ugh, kind of gross. All right. He's going to attack in for one now. Silver Drake, the draw for us. Not really what we're looking for. Um... Yeah, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and go for the Flowstone Charger here. Sacking my Ancient Spring. Holding up Jilt. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt. Any bounce effect here and we get kind of wrecked. Rainbow Crow though, not too bad. Oh, still hitting me for one, okay. Would love to hit a land here. Because uh, this does not reduce the cost of Jilt. Hmm. Which means I don't really want to attack my Flowstone Charger into their Rainbow Crow. In fact, I think I'm just passing him. Being very, very sad about it. I do have Prohibit open, but I'm not going to Prohibit an Opt. I'll let them scry one and draw their card. So this should be okay. Oof, had to hit that land last turn for Jilt. We would have just been sitting in such good position. All right, no plays from the opponent. They're probably going to turn... Oh, they didn't. I thought they were going to turn my island into a different colored land with Dream Thrush, but looks like opponent missed the memo. Unless they have a jilt of their own. Again, lots of two for ones in this format. If we're, if they just oh man, if they just pass a turn like that, I am so stoked, so thrilled. Land number seven from the opponent. All right, what kind of scary spells do you have now, sir? Could be oh, they have the armored guardian. All right, kind of silly. They don't have mana to activate it though. So if I can jilt this turn, I'd be very, very happy. Let's hit that land for jilt, please. An attack for one because I have the pinger. Makes sense. That is a repulse, which is also a good draw, I suppose. Go ahead and shoot their Dream Thrush right now while they're tapped out of uh, giving protection to other creatures. And I will actually just repulse the Armored Guardian right now. Because I imagine they're probably just going to recast it. Oh, they have Confound. Sure. I was going to say, they probably just recast it. And then if I hit a land, I get to uh, get them with Jilt. But now they have Double Blue open to give this Shroud, which is very annoying. Hmm. Awkward. Shackles so that my Hunter does not untap. All right, that's fine. That is not a big deal. I have a lot of gas in my hand. And in fact, if I hit a Plains next turn, I get to bounce my Razorfin Hunter with my Silver Drake and just blow them out. Island, though. All right, well, I can't Jilt now that they have double blue open to give the Armored Guardian Shroud. So I think we're just going to pass here. I'm in no rush. Uh, I have Prohibit open for four. And I have some nice spells in hand should I draw some extra. Extra gasoline. All right. No blocks. We'll take two from the crow. Hope the opponent taps out of all of their blue for some reason. Oh, no. They have, oh, wait. I was going to say they have a Goblin Trenches, which is just unbeatable, but I have Prohibit. <laughs> Yeah. Silly me. Yeah, this card is insane. Sacrifice the land, create two 1-1 one, one red and white goblin creatures. Now, I do have the washout for trenches, but I still think that's 100% the card that uh, we need to get rid of here. I'll go ahead and attack in for five now with my Flowstone Charger. Because if they want to trade with their Armored Guardian, I'm more than happy to let that happen. And then... I could actually wash out on blue. 
which might be worth it here. Washout on blue, because they don't have the Shackles mana. It would bounce everything but the Flowstone Charger and the Rainbow Crow, because I'd imagine that they turn it into a different color in response. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. They would have access to holding up double blue again, though, is the only problem with that. Yeah, maybe I can wait. I could also just jilt my Razorfin Hunter back to my hand and do, deal two damage to the Crow if I wanted to. But now that I've left them untapped with white, they could bounce the Shackles. Oh, they're still attacking with their Crow. They're going to attack with both of their creatures. Okay. I am fine with this. I will take four. And they're tapping out of white here, so that's good. Disciple of Kangi, okay. And now we will jilt their Disciple back to hand and shoot their crow for two. We're bouncing the Disciple because one, it doesn't have flying by itself, and two, they have to tap a planes to play the Disciple, which means they don't have shackles open. All right, another Repulse, pretty good draw. Bash the opponent for six here. And, uh, yeah, just pass the turn. Breath of Darigaz can deal the last four points of damage in a pinch. I imagine the Disciple of Kangi comes down, which we just repulse at end of turn. Man, gotta love Repulse. Card is so nice. Such a huge tempo swing and card draw. And we will offer the trade Flowstone Charger for your Armored Guardian. Um, what I could have done is washed out the Armored Guardian back to their hand, which I think was a totally fine, viable line, and then go for the Breath of Darigaz, but... They're going to need a lot to uh, to get out of this one here. All right, so let's attack for one. Put them to four. And then go for the old Breath of Darigaz. Let's both take four damage. Worst case scenario, they have like a captain's maneuvers there, which might wreck me, but... <laughs> All right, so we're playing against some four-color Dirtle shenanigans. They do have Armored Guardian. Um, looks like they're a little bit cold to my Razorfin Hunters, which is nice. Well, I think we'll just run it back. Our deck's pretty good. Um, oh, shoot, no. I should bring back, bring in the Aura Blast if I haven't... Okay, we need to bring in Aura Blast for their uh, Shackles and for their Goblin Trenches if... Ah, oh, too late. Okay, darn it. Bad sideboarding, bad sideboarding. Uh, opponent put me on the play, which was smart of them. Again, draw first format, in my opinion. Oops. But we have a very nice one. Again, we're, since we're base two color, it's so, easiest for, uh, so easy for us to keep good hands or start with opening good hands. All right, they're main phasing the opt. Okay. And I guess we're just going to play our Arctic Merfolk on curve as a 2-2. Um, next turn, I'm probably going to play Reef Shaman in Ancient Spring and then go for the turn 4 Flowstone Charger. Oof, they have the Samite Pilgrim. That's a nice one. But we have Repulse now. Good stuff. All right, let's bash in for two. Let's play that Reef Shaman. Let's play that Ancient Spring. And I can start targeting the opponent's lands as well in a pinch, but for now, we're just going to use it as our own fixing. Oh no! Slingshot Goblin! Well, that's really bad for us. In fact, I think I have to repulse their Slingshot Goblin 
and t take them off red if possible. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I could even get a little bit greedy here and sack this and play Samite Pilgrim, which is what I'm going to do, actually. All right, upkeep, turn their mountain into a plains. Oh, they have a removal spell in response or something here. Zap, maybe. Indeed, zap on my pilgrim again. Definitely annoying. Guess it doesn't matter now that it's tapped. Uh, if I get to draw land, though, I do hold up prohibit, which is good. Okay, another planes from the opponent and a pass. That is not a land. Which means bad news for us. I'm going to go ahead and attack in for two here. Make them block and protect their own Samite Pilgrim. And just take the damage. Um, and I guess I'll play out a Kavu Aggressor instead of my Coastal Drake. Hopefully they don't have another mountain in their hand. Turn that into a plane since they have a glut of planes already. No mountain, please. All right, phew. Doesn't look like they have another mountain. Oh no, Dream Thrush! All right, we still have a turn to find a land for Prohibit on their, on their uh, Slingshot Goblin. Oh, Repulse also works though, okay. That again buys us some time. I'll attack in with both our creatures. I imagine they block. The silly thing is, oh, okay, so they're making a mistake here. If they give their Samite Pilgrim protection, I can turn their mountain into a plains or a island, and then they're only produce or uh, then they're only preventing two damage, and I get to eat their Samite Pilgrim. Nice. Okay, that was really good for us. Opponent got a little bit blown out there by the onboard trick. But I was holding up a prohibit. Alright, I imagine we're going to see that goblin again, which we do. As well as a shackles. Alright, no big deal there. I'll be happy to repulse there. Goblin at end of turn. Found our fourth red source, which is great. Attacking for two and pass. I guess I should have just played the Coastal Drake last turn instead of holding up Repulse, because I could just Repulse on my turn, right? Oh, no, no, my game plan was to prohibit it. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Should be alright now. Notably, I didn't Reef Shaman, which I guess I could have done. I should have Reef Shamaned their mountain to something else, and then they would have to Dream Thrush it. Oh, well, there's that Goblin Trenches now. So we need to <laughs> draw this. This does not kill. This does not kill Goblin Trenches. All right, attack for two while we can. Um, I guess we want to play Coastal Drake here instead. I'm going to have to win this game through Flyers. Turn their mountain into a plains. Really wish I had brought in that enchantment destruction, but I'm a fool. So now bad things are happening to us. All right, Disciple of Kangi. And a pass. All right, there's our sixth land. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the disciple of Kangi now that we kill with the, the Stormscape Battle Mage. Uh, I don't even know if I want to attack for two here. This just trades with one of their lands, which is not ideal. But, well, you know what? No, let's just let's just kill the, the disciple. Let's just kill their disciple. <sighs> disciple gives their creatures flying, anyways. Really kicking myself for not bringing in that uh, enchantment removal. We had both, what, Aura Blast, and I think there was one more. Wow, they didn't create any goblins end of turn. That is very surprising to me. Oh, <laughs> they had a Breath of Dari, guys. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. And a Samite Pilgrim. Okay, so if I can find a removal spell here for the Dream Thrush, attack for two, and then draw my own Breath of Dari, guys. Oh! <laughs> There's the Breath of Dari, guys. Uh, I just need to find two points of damage. Oh, lordy. Why didn't I kill... Why didn't I kill their stupid Dream Thrush instead of their ground creature? I could have had it all. That... Doesn't work right now, but it's a great answer to Goblin Trenches when they start sacrificing some lands here. I am going to take a bit of damage this next turn, but after that I get to wash out on white, which is a pretty huge blowout. Okay, this is going to be good. Kind of silly. We just need to find a way to deal with that Dream Thrush. <laughs> we have how many Razorfin Hunters in our deck? Three? Okay, I'm going to take six damage here. Yep, I'm going to go to nine. Ooh. Oh, wow, we're so close. We're so close to being able to wash out and then prohibit. I'm, oh wait, no, I'm not. I'm multiple mana short. Never mind. Don't listen to me. All right, wash out on white here. It's kind of insane because they can't like pop goblin goblins out in response either. So that was a pretty good hit. Ah, we just need to find one point of damage for that damn Dream Thrush. I can counter their uh, their Samite Pilgrim, though. They'll play the Pilgrim, and they'll, they'll play their uh, Trenches. And so we can counter the Pilgrim. They'll cast out their Trenches afterwards. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Find me that one point of damage. Ooh, yes. All right. That will be good enough if it survives. <laughs> Hold. Hold on. Three cards in hand. They can't have anything good, right? That's how it works. Just nothing. Manacles. That... Doesn't do anything if they don't have a... No! Oh, wait, no. They're going to tap their Dream Thrush to add a black. But tapping their Dream Thrush means I win. Yes! We did it! Sick. Sick, sick. All right, awesome. Coastal Drake gets in for two, presumably. And then Breath of Darigaz finishes it off. Oh, well, then we also drew another Razor Fin, but... Go, 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 Coastal Drake! Yes! Breath of Darigas, last four points. Did we do it?
Come on! <sighs> All right, and we take the first match. Beating the Goblin Trenches, which was terrifying, but uh, woo! Let's uh, stay tuned for round two. Round two of this invasion block draft. We are on the draw because the opponent went first, like somebody who doesn't play the format and they mulliganed. To no surprise. So opponents on a mulligan though six, maybe five. No, they're on a mulligan to six. All right, mulligan to six, and we're on the draw. All we need to find is a lovely little mountain. Oh, they played a blood fire dwarf. <laughs> Uh, I don't think this card is main deck worthy, but it is going to do some work versus my Razorfin Hunter if uh, if they so want to. I mean, I have to run it out. They have no reason to use it anyway, otherwise. But this means that they have to hold open a red mana from here on out. I could just trade, obviously, but I'm actually willing to take the one damage, because if they make this mistake of tapping out, then I get them. If they don't, that's fine as well. I think that was worth the risk. All right. Nope. Follow-up plays. And we do have a follow-up. Raise a fin. Good stuff. Put on the mono red plan, which I can't imagine is what they're doing. Although, if they are running Bloodfire Dwarf, maybe they're mono red in some world where one percenters... Cabo Aggressor as a 3-2, but we top deck the planes like a champion. All right, this creature cannot block for note, or to note. And it is a 3-2 for three. And if you kick it for four extra mana, it is a 4-3. Again, that, that seems expensive, but you have to remember, it's perfectly fine as a three drop, just as a 3-2 that can't block. And then if you have excess mana and top deck it, it's, you know, it does some work. <laughs> Holy smoke, those three cards are better than my whole deck. Well, I guess that's reassuring for me. If I get to untap with Prohibit open and my Flowstone Charger, then I think it's a it's an easy win. I'm not going to block here if the opponent attacks with their Cabo Aggressor. Um, I don't think there's any reason to do that. Although, yeah, yeah, there's no reason to do that. I don't think it's worth it. We can easily outrace them five for two. And uh, Razorfin Hunter does some good work. Oh, Okay, well, the opponent just scoops, so I imagine they were stuck on lands and the Flowstone Charger was just going to beat them down because, again, their their creature could not block. Uh, sideboard? Nah, who needs that? Deck's great. Deck's great, magic's great, invasion block's great, and uh, we're just going to run it back. All right, game two, round two. We are again on the draw, which is nice for us. Uh oh, I would imagine the opponent is going to mulligan. I'm happy to keep this hand. Prohibit, even on the draw, is still great. We have a repulse to buy back time. Some good, uh, some good cards in our hand here. Oh crap! They sideboarded out of a color and forgot to fix their lands. Ay, that sucks. <laughs> That's so brutal. Oh no. Well, looks like they might just concede here and we might get the round two bye. Yowza. Okay, well, we don't get to play out our sweet hand, but... Uh, so what the opponent did was they, they sideboarded out a different color. Like they went into their deck section or whatever uh, during sideboarding. Brought in a different color, forgot to add the lands, and yeah, you're not going to have a good time if that happens. So, I guess we're just going to go straight towards uh, round three. The third and final match here with our blue-red splashing, different colors, invasion block draft. We are on the draw, and we have a lovely hand. Got basically all of our colors except for the black for the uh, Knights... Nightscape? Stormscape. Stormscape uh, Battle Mage. But... Prohibit, Samite Pilgrim. Ooh, if we draw a Razorfin Hunter, we're going to be in real happy shape. Although a Reef Shaman off the top, I'm not going to complain about. We're almost certainly just going to be using this to prohibit the opponent from uh, getting multiple colors. Like next turn, I'm probably going to turn their uh, island into another forest. 
Jilt was an excellent draw as well. Let's play out our Samite Pilgrim. Jilt's always a great draw, let's be honest. Pass the turn here. Uh, turn their forest into an island, or their island into a forest either way, but we'll give them double blue. Give them the old double blue and say, can you cast anything? Ooh, now they have a Plains. Now they have a Disciple of Kangi. Okay. No harm there. <laughs> just hit the natural, just hit our natural four color. Not what we wanted to draw, but uh, <laughs> here we are. And, I mean, still uncertain what colors the opponent is playing. I'm just going to, again, turn their forest into an island here. We're not sure what their base color is. Oh, they hit another forest. Unlucky for us. Standard Bearer. I'm going to go ahead and happily prohibit that card. It's going to let us jilt next turn, bounce their Disciple, and kill their... Dis uh, sorry, bounce their... Oh, I guess these are both Disciples. Bounce their Anna Disciple, kill their Disciple of Kangi. Okay, well, drawing nothing but lands is not ideal. Um, I guess I'm just going to hold on to the jilt for now. There's no reason to use it out. No rush. Opponent has three cards in their hand. And now we'll just turn their island into a forest. Cut them off of blue. This could be like a Kabu Climber. Ugh, Savage Gorilla. Yeah, that's also a good one. All right. We don't have access to black, though. So just to buy some time, I think we uh, jilt here. Bounce the Gorilla, kill the Disciple. Hope to hit a relevant win con. Nope, that's just more land. Okay. Well, started off with a good draw of Jilt, but from there on out, we haven't really <laughs> found anything. Oh, I guess I should be playing out my Swamp for the Samite Pilgrim. This is actually a mistake. A mistake on my part. so that I can prevent some extra damage with my Samite. Yowza! Okay, more lands. Come on! I don't need much. I'm just asking for <laughs> any creature that can attack, please. Uh, again, gonna turn their island into a forest. They could use their Savage Gorilla in response and kill my Sav uh, Samite Pilgrim, of course, but not much I can do about that. Not given the hand that I'm drawing. This deck would have really loved a Goblin Trenches. Now that they have the Nomadic Elf, I don't think it's worth using the Shaman. Uh, we'd rather just use it to block their Anna Disciple. So we're just going to play out our land here and pass. Play the old land go. Don't need to repulse anything just yet. We have time. We have a lot of life still. An opponent doesn't have uh, much in the way of a threat on the battlefield just yet. Although now they do. Necrovolver is a good one. That's a 5-5 trample. Whenever this deals damage, you gain that much life. Uh, I'll repulse that. I guess hope to draw our other prohibit. Oh, baby! That was a good draw. <laughs> that was a very good draw. So you can prohibit creatures with kicker because the kicker doesn't actually add to their cost. <clears throat> but for now, we'll turn their swamp into a forest. If they have another land, they can still play out the uh, Necrovolver off of the Nomadic Elf. But they just have a pincer spider. All right, I'm gonna let that resolve and just repulse that end of turn. I think. I guess I don't need to. I just wash out on green, but that's not even that great right now. I think we'd rather just repulse and try to cycle into a uh, relevant beater. So I can play out our flowstone charger here and still hold up mana for a prohibit. 
which is really great. Razor Fin Hunter, also not a bad one. Let's turn their swamp into a forest again. All right, there's their land. So they're going to filter a mana into a black. They're going to hobble my Flowstone Charger. Is that worth countering? I don't think so. Flowstone Charger is still a very good blocker here. And I don't care about the Quirion Trailblazer. You can get your other mana source. Okay, and they're not playing red, to note. Yeah, we might just win this game by playing out multiple Razorfin Hunters. Let's start with the first one. And turn their black mana into another green. Looking good for me so far. All right, this is this is where they they play their necrovol or yeah necrovolver and I prohibit them. Got them good, kids. Got them good. Say no to volvers. One blue. Sure, give their nomadic elf flying. That's fine. I'll fall down to twelve. And I'm just going to shoot down their Anna Disciple on my main turn. Ooh, Exotic Curse. Not a bad draw. But not something I actually need to do anything about right now either, so. <sighs> I guess we'll just keep Reef Shamaning their Swamp. Give them more Forests. Sit back and play the waiting game. Oh no, compass. Add one mana of any color of basic land you control. Okay, so as long as I still upkeep, they really can't do anything about it. And this flowstone charger just totally bricks them. Eventually, I will draw another razor fin hunter and start being able to ping down their X2s. Yeah, let's change their island into a forest now. Because it it feels like Necrovolver is probably the only black card they're splashing for. Maybe like the Savage Gorilla activation as well. But Oh, that card is very good. All of the masters are great. I'm pretty happy I have an exotic curse here to finish that off. Aurora Griffin as well, sure. And only one card left in the opponent's hand. So we're looking to find another Razorvin Hunter to start shooting. All of their stuff down. Flyer's not awful, but have to use the curse on the Sunscape Apprentice or whatever master. Good stuffs. Play it a 1 1 flyer. And pass the turn again. Changing their island once again to a forest. I don't know. I feel like this is pretty irrelevant at this point because of the nomadic and because of how much mana they have, but who knows? Maybe this stops them from doing something. Ooh, a reviving vapors. Okay. They revealed a dismantling. Oh no, a power armor. Oh, that's gross. Okay, power armor is going to kill me. This card is very good. It's four mana for an artifact domain. You three and tap. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each basic land type among lands you control. So uh, we're going to dive very, very quickly to, to the power armor. Ugh. I don't know what to do about that. There's not much I can do. I guess I should not attack into a pincer spider. <laughs> Oh, gross, gross, gross. Okay. A block here, block here. They're going to use their power armor. And this is currently plus four, plus four. Uh, so even using the Reef Shaman is not going to change 
the fact that they can kill my flow stone. But I do get to shoot their Aurora Griffin here, it looks like. I have to do it prior to them resolving that standard bearer. The Sunscape Familiar, okay. So ping the standard bearer here. I did find another Razor Fin Hunter. I guess this is the turn that I have to wash out on green. Just to buy myself a little bit of time. Okay, there's their Trailblazer. Get another land. There's their Nomadic Elf. And there's their Pincer Spider. All right, so I can shoot the Nomadic Elf now that they don't have open mana for the power armor. Ooh, Stormscape Battle Mage. Very good draw. Okay, awesome. We might actually have a chance still. So shoot, shoot. Cast with both kickers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kill their Pincer Spider. Gain three life. Very nice draw for us. And they're hellbent, so it actually looks like we have a, a decent shot of winning this game now, surprisingly. Honestly, I mean, I mean, as soon as they draw another creature, it gets rough, sure, but... Like, they attack with the Trailblazer here, probably. Oh, no, they don't. Well, now we just start pinging them. Oh, I drew a Magma Burst. Yes, Kenji, yes! All right, Double Razorfin Hunter gonna do duty here. Gonna do the duty work. There are also nine cards left in their library, so they're gonna deck before we do. Um, I am actually gonna shoot the Trailblazer twice here, make them use the power armor. And then I can just kill it again on my turn. Oh, they didn't even use the power armor. Well, that works for me too. Can't attack into their O3 though. Until I draw my third razor fin. And now we can just start shooting their face. Bada boom, bada bing, baby. Good stuff. All right. I guess I'll just hold on to these lands now in case they are playing some number of discard effects. But overall, I think this is looking good. Two damage a turn is not irrelevant. <laughs> it's the ping clock versus their uh, their mill out clock. Cabo Aggressor, why not? Actually, I guess I should probably play around a Wrath effect and just hold the Aggressor. Um, like, they're not doing anything. I don't have to do anything, right? I'm already winning on the board. I think that's fine. Okay, well, that was a pretty good draw. I can return the Stormscape to my hand now and uh, kill their familiar. That is okay. That mills them quicker. In fact, why would they... I think they just misjudged and snap used their exclude on my Arctic Merfolk, but not realizing that I'm about to replay my Stormscape. So I think a mistake on my opponent's part. I do need to play a land here now to uh, to hold up Magma Burst because I can sacrifice the Ancient Spring for two mana. Well, now they're dying even faster to mill. Six cards in the opponent's hand, but... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 lands on the battlefield already, and only one in their graveyard. So they probably have a good number of lands in their hand. Now we actually get to bash in for two here. Put them to eight. I guess I might as well run out the Kavu Aggressor, maybe? Exile target attacking creature. All right, you got me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have them dead next turn. 
Um, I'm not going to show them the magma burst if I don't have to, though. All right, and the opponent scoops. Sweet deal. So they have some very powerful cards. I don't believe I have any way to deal with an artifact unless I want to bring in reality. Uh, wait, do I... Oh, okay, you know what? Orum's Thunder seems pretty good here on the sideboard splash. Uh, they do have what? Was it Shackle? No, it was Hobble. They have Hobble and they have Power Armor, so definitely worth it to bring in the Orum's Thunder. This is a good removal, double removal spell uh, in that scenario. And what am I taking out? That is the question. That is the question, my friends. I don't I don't want to take out any of these cards that are all so nice. Uh, could be the Merfolk. My only creature that I get value with was the Stormscape Battle Mage, but I mean that was good last game, but I don't think we need that. So let's ship this and go to second game. Game two of the final round. We are on the draw again, which I do love, and we have a very keepable hand. Turn one Reef is going to do a lot of work for us. Fixes our mana, lets us do all of the things. Hopefully draw one of our three Razorfin Hunters off the top, but hey, even if we don't, we can start using the Reef Shaman on the opponent's lands. Ooh, especially if they don't have anything to do here. All right, well, we found a three drop to play next turn, so that's good. And uh, we know green is one of the main colors of the opponent, so we're just going to turn their forest into another swamp. Seems good to me. Okay. Disciple of Kangi, that's fine. Still going to use um, the Reef Shaman to turn their forest into another swamp. I'm going to go ahead and play out the Aggressor here before the, the Samite Pilgrim, because I want to keep the opponent... A little bit neutralized on mana. Keep them off their ever important green. And there's their Sunscape Master. All right, so we're going to have to use an exotic curse here at this point. Um, so let's turn that into a swamp. I guess I'm actually going to attack in for three here first and see if they block. They might not now that I've main phase turned my land into a swamp, but I guess they will. <laughs> and let's just curse that baby. Let's just get rid of the master while we can. Well, now they have double green anyways. Savage Gorilla. All right. Good card. Um, I can just battle mage their gorilla right now, actually, which might be worth it. I think I'm going to do that. Before they get to untap and potentially do something scary. Plus, I don't need that land right now anyways, right? Because I can still cast the snid off of the lands that I have on the battlefield in hand. All right, let's turn their swamp into a plains. And they're on the pass plan. I like that. We did see that exile a creature um, card from them last game, so could be what is in store, but I don't think they want to waste that on a 2-2. Two -two. Okay, snid it up. Once again, turn their swamp into a plains. And now with the Snid, I could actually turn both of their forests into planes if I want to do that, although I don't think that's worth it. What's silly? Oh, they had a black spell that they couldn't cast because of that. All right, so good to note. I think we're just going to attack in for two here. I'm not going to play around a Wrath effect. We didn't see one last game, although it could have very well been in one of their uh, bottom cards. Let's just turn their swamp into another land type again. It seems to have been good last turn. A 
Aurora Griffin. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah, still not going to play around a Wrath. Attack for two here. Use the Reef Shaman to play out our Flowstone Charger. They have some trickiness, but that's fine. We'll make them use it. Oh, they're just throwing away their creature. If they're just throwing away their creature, I'm a little bit more hesitant to run out another one into a Wrath, but I'm feeling greedy. There aren't too many Wrath effects in the format. Uh, the worst one for me would be Route. But if they just have like Martyr's Judgment or whatever it's called, I do get Flyers. Hobble's fine. All right. And we even have the Orm's Thunder in our hand to counter that. And do a Query and Trailblazer. Getting themselves another Swamp. Okay. Um, so I guess there's... Not much use now. I think we're just going to hit them for a million damage here. Get a white. And that. One, two, three, four. And I'm just going to bash him for 11. If they have Dominaria's Judgment, that's bad for me. If they have Route, that's bad for me. But I'm going to say show me. Show me the biz. Show me the biz. And they cannot show me the biz. All right, so we wonderfully managed to 3-0 that nice invasion block. In fact, it was a invasion block draft. It was a 2-0-2-0-2-0-3-0-6-0. So pretty nice. Our deck was sweet. I did think we were a little bit short on win conditions, but triple Razorfin Hunter and a lot of nice blue cards, double Prohibit, Jilt, double Repulse, did some amazing work. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that look at um, Invasion Block Draft. That's Invasion Plane Shift Apocalypse. Uh, I have been grinding these out hardcore on my stream, but I thought I would record one for YouTube and Numot Gaming to, uh, to get some extra content up there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Please check out the other content here on my YouTube page and on Numot Gaming if you haven't already. I will see you all next time for another edition of Drafting with Newmont. Take it easy.